This is a video that I have been very excited to make. I think Carter Sullivan is the original creator of monthly reset videos. I personally have never made one myself, but as we're approaching the end of the year, and as maybe you know if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm trying to readjust myself to a more motivated stance. Basically, I recently graduated. In May, I graduated, and I've been a little post-grad girly in her 20s <laughs> since then, which if you have experienced that so far, you know can feel like you're running on a little hand hamster wheel. So I've given myself time to adjust to new life, you know, but now it's time to be purposeful about it. So that being said, there are quite a few different aspects of this video and I will make sure to time card them in the chapters so you definitely can skip what you're not interested in and go to what you are interested in and then also based on that I'll kind of know, you know, if I continue to do these in the future, what types of reflections and resets are of interest to you or may be helpful to you. All of that being said, hi, I'm Anna and I'm so glad you found your way to this channel. If any of this reset is of interest to you, there are a lot more details about everything that I'll be talking about in other videos on my channel, so you can check those out as well. But I think ground zero with where we can begin with this reset is a monthly reflection just on how September went. This is something that you would have seen in my vlogs, but as we know, August was a very busy month for me, meaning September was very much a recovery month from that, which I felt. I felt the need for recovery in September. I put together just a few reflection questions, so if this is something that that you are doing along with this video, you can definitely answer these two. Number one, what went well this month? For me, some things that went well were that I did take the time to rest and I felt really grateful that I had some time that I could rest. And so my off days, honestly, a lot of them were spent on the couch, <laughs> not doing much. I really didn't pursue too many goals this month. I really didn't have too many intentions, accomplishments this month, but that was something that went well was that I could rest. Also, my sister got married at the beginning of the month and so I got to go with Zach to Denver where her wedding was and see so much family that I hadn't seen in a very long time and it was a packed super busy weekend but it was a super fun weekend and so that went well this month. For a while, like a few months at this point, I had been saving up to be able to purchase a new laptop because with YouTube as a little side hustle, my MacBook Air that I got in 2018 for college and lasted me through all of college, all of grad school has really been slowing down and just has not been able to do anything YouTube related and so it definitely was a necessary upgrade that I'm very excited for and I've had my new laptop for like four days at this point but that is something that went well in September and then also overall I feel like I really have gotten into a grind at my job at work and I feel like I know sort of my place there and I know what I need to do every day and I've been working hard to be the best version of myself that I can while at work and so that's something that has gone well today. I even mentioned in a past vlog, a recent one, that we had an audit in the month of August that then we like learned the results of in September and I did really well. So that was good to hear. <laughs> when of reinforcement. What didn't go so well in this month? For me, the rest was really a double-edged sword because like I said, I needed recovery. It was good to be able to take that time, but also I laid on the couch <laughs> most of the day for a lot of days this month. Like it kind of went beyond just the, oh, I just need a restful day and sort of just came into the I don't want to say laziness because it was like I couldn't do more but you know that feeling where it's just too much downtime of not doing anything can start to mentally feel tough and I kind of realized that I was taking so much rest time that I was just making myself tireder because why would I then want to do anything if I could just lay on the couch you know so that was something that didn't go so well while also being something that went well it's that double-edged sword there of being able to take the time to rest. I feel like this month had very few purposely slow moments Moments. Obviously, as I mentioned, I had a couple off days and those technically were slow by the definition of the word, but I mean like the appreciation of life, romanticizing life, like just being in the moment type moments and not feeling pressures of to-do lists or of deadlines or anything like that. I feel like there really weren't those moments in September and that's something that I want to increase going forward. With that, another thing that did not go well is that I feel that I felt just a lot of pressure this month and self-inflicted, but I I felt pressure of demands to put on myself for YouTube, feeling like I wasn't good enough, I wasn't producing enough videos, the videos I was producing were boring, and like I was telling myself this, nobody else told me this. I mean, if it's true, you can let me know, but <laughs> it was just me telling myself this, or with like brands that I've been working with, just feeling like, oh, the content I'm producing for them, they don't like, the content I'm producing for them isn't what they were looking for, like I'm not what they want anymore, you know, just like that negative self-talk really was high in this month, so definitely something that did not go 
well. I didn't read at all. The last book I finished, I finished on September 3rd, and that's just a habit that like I enjoy reading, so it's kind of a bummer that I didn't, it's not even that I didn't have time, I just didn't prioritize it, I just kinda, I don't know if I wasn't in the mood, it just didn't happen, so. <laughs> That didn't go well. And then also something I've been very bad about this month specifically is just being able to do like the little things around the apartment. Like laundry felt like it absolutely sucked the life out of me. Being able to like wipe down counters, just random vacuum, that type of thing just felt extra hard this month. And so I was really bad at it. And so my goal is to not <laughs> be like that anymore. So definitely something that didn't go well in September. But I always do think it's important if we are talking about things that don't go well that we want to get better at. Next question. What challenges did I face this month? Because those challenges change every month. So it's good to make room for them, understand why some months might be different than others, and just give yourself credit for external factors or even internal factors that may have been challenging in the past month. For me, some challenges I faced was the utter exhaustion that I was feeling, which 100% has a lot of things playing into it, but that was definitely a challenge I was facing. For me, a challenge this month were that there was a lot of really hard days at work. If you're not a subscriber and don't know, I work in a YouTube detention center and I'm a social worker and working in jail a lot of the hard things I can't necessarily talk about and I choose to not mention not in a way to not be transparent and not be authentic but just because obviously like stuff is confidential and also there's stuff that I haven't processed through that I can't like come online and talk about but there were quite a few days this month where jail was really jailing and I don't want to like downplay it because like I said it's still stuff that I'm processing through but I guess throw the little buzzword in there like I started kind of feeling the effects of some vicarious trauma this month which maybe played into the exhaustion or whatever it may be so again that's something that maybe I'll talk about deeper once I feel like I actually have something to say about it but that was definitely a challenge this month was that there was a lot of hard things that I have seen <laughs> and then another challenge in this 100% is an internal one but just an utter like loss of motivation this month which partly like I said is okay because with the post-grad timeline right I started my job in June and so I've just been taking adjustment like it's <laughs> my adjustment era June July even August August still and then it's like by September I feel like I was adjusted but it wasn't where I was needing to have the same level of grace with myself so now it was kind of just like okay I'm here cool now what <laughs> which is why now I'm taking the effort to realize that okay I'm in a time of life now where I feel kind of comfortable with my habits and my routines and everything to a point that I can work on bettering myself bettering my life being in my achievement era now but I probably should have started that a little bit sooner so that I wouldn't have had this little like lull time where I got to be in my about it. Five things that I was grateful for this month. Larkin's wedding. I got to see so many family members, like I said, that I haven't seen in a long time and just was very fun. Very grateful for Zach, my boyfriend who I live with. He really holds me together whenever I'm not holding myself together, even with like like the little things around the apartment and everything that I mentioned. Like he's just very helpful to me and I am very grateful for him. Number three, I am grateful for my job. Jobs, including YouTube and the tutoring and social work and all of that. Obviously, sometimes days are hard, but I am very grateful for the jobs that I get to hold and towards the end of the month weather is getting cooler which just yeah there's just something about fall I know it's hyped up a lot but it deserves some of the hype the weather's been getting cooler which I feel like starts to make the mood a little fun I actually kind of forgot about it but I did make myself a little coffee with some pumpkin creamer in my list, I apparently forgot the fifth thing that I'm grateful for. So number five thing I'm grateful for, honestly, is the coworkers at my job. I guess that's like a little bit separate than my job itself, but I am surrounded by a great team of people that I genuinely enjoy spending time with during the day and are very supportive. And so again, despite the hard days, I'm very grateful for the people that I'm surrounded by every day. And then lastly, am I satisfied with how the month went? Yes, even though it wasn't my best month, every month provides something, you know, every month has some sort of purpose, some sort of reason. In, if not just something you can learn from it so even though it wasn't my favorite month I am satisfied with how September went so going into our next section now and this will be a very quick one because like I said I did not read really this month at all but books if it shows how much I've dropped this habit whenever I went to Goodreads to see what I've read recently my phone had to re-download it because it like offloaded it because I wasn't using the app at all which is unlike me but the one book that I did read I finished on September 3rd was The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell and I gave 
gave that one a 3.5 stars. I'm not going to go deep into synopsises in this video because I have mentioned it all in previous videos, but Family Upstairs ended up being a 3.5 stars. I would recommend, but it's not like a, you have to drop everything immediately and go read it now type of deal. And then what I've been reading since then <laughs> is Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I am not that deep into it. That's how much I've read, but I will continue to read that this month. And so far it has been good. Other recent books that I've read that were all either four or five stars for me and I've mentioned in all in previous videos. Alias Emma by Ava Glass, Wake by Shelley Burr, A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, Wish You Were Here by Jodi Picoult, and Home Before Dark by Riley Saker. All of those are recommendations that I have recently. Maybe in future monthly reset videos this section will be a little bit longer but as of right now that's kind of it. If we look forward to some books that I'm planning on reading soon that's why I brought all of these guys to be sitting there. This is a little spooky season book that I got last year and never actually read but A Letter to Three Witches by Elizabeth Bass. Oh it came out in February 2022 so I guess this is actually its first spooky season that it's existing. Nearly a century ago Gwen Ingalls great-great-grandfather cast a spell with catastrophic side effects. As a result the Grand Council of Witches forbade his descendants from practicing witchcraft. The council even planted anonymous snitches called watchers in the community to report any errant spell casting. Yet magic may still be alive and not so well in Zenobia. Gwen and her cousins Trudy and Milo receive a letter from Gwen's adopted sister Tanith informing them that she has bewitched one of their partners and will run away with him at the end of the week. While Gwen frets about whether to trust her scientist boyfriend, currently out of town on a beetle studying trip, she worries that a local grad student Jeremy is secretly a watcher doing his own research. Cousin Trudy is so stressed out she accidentally enchants her cupcakes, creating havoc among her bakery customers and in her marriage. Perhaps it is time family took back control and figured out how to harness their powers. How else can Gwen decide whether her growing feelings for Jeremy are real or the result of too many of Trudy's cupcakes? So I think it's just going to be kind of a quick fun read, like I said, perfect for spooky season going into October. This book came out in September. It's People Person by Candace Cardi Williams. One father, four mothers, five children. If you could choose your family, you would not choose the Penningtons. Dimple Pennington knows of her half siblings, Nikisha, Danny, Lizzie, and Prince, but she doesn't really know them. Five people who don't have anything in common except disappointment, faint memories of being driven through Brixton in their dad's gold Jeep, and some pretty complex abandonment issues. Besides, Dimple has bigger things to think about. She's 30 and her life isn't really going anywhere. An aspiring lifestyle influencer with a terrible and wayward boyfriend, Dimple's life has shrunk to the size of a phone screen. And despite a small but loyal following, she's never felt more alone in her life. That is, until a dramatic event brings her half-siblings crashing back into her life. And when they're all forced to reconnect with Cyril Pennington, their absent father they never really knew, things get even more complicated. A Labor of Love by Leah Omar. Kate Malone has her life mapped out. After graduating with her master's degree, she plans to marry her high school sweetheart and settle down in the same comfortable town where she's lived her whole life. But when a betrayal shatters her dreams of the future, Kate's father convinces her to volunteer for a few months as a midwife at a rural hospital in Tanzania. Heartbroken and unsure of who she is and what she wants, Kate is braced to wait out the four-month commitment on the other side of the world in misery. Instead, she finds friendship, meaningful work, and a growing attraction to Dr. Andrew, the talented, kind, and impossibly handsome physician she works under. Drawn together by an immediate and undeniable chemistry, Kate and Andrew's flirtation soon develops into something more until Kate's two worlds collide unexpectedly. Suddenly forced to confront race issues and the sacrifices she's made to please others at the expense of her own happiness, Kate must make an impossible choice. Can she finally find the courage to be the star of her own life? Karen Slaughter, The Silent Life. This one I've talked about in a previous video because I bought it at a bookstore nearby, but Karen Slaughter is an Atlanta-based author, and so all of her books take place either in Georgia or in Atlanta, and this one is about a GBI investigator in a state penitentiary, so apparently it's kind of spooky, and she's a well-known author who's been writing forever, so I'm excited to read this one, especially because, like, it takes place where I am, which is kind of cool. And then the last one is very much like me getting out of my comfort zone. It's an arc that was sent to me, but but it came out a while ago at this point. But it is basically, in a few weeks, 16 countries will compete in the Blaze Wrath World Cup, a tournament where dragons and their riders fight for glory in a dangerous relay. Lena longs to represent her native Puerto Rico in their first ever World Cup appearance. And when Puerto Rico's runner, the only player without a dragon steed, is kicked off the team, she's given the chance. But when she discovers that a former Blaze Wrath superstar has teamed up with the Sire, a legendary dragon who's cursed into taking a human form, the safety of the cup is jeopardized. The pair are burning down dragon sanctuaries around the world and refuse to stop unless the cup gets canceled. All Lena wants to do was represent her country. Now to do that she'll have to navigate an international conspiracy that's deadlier than her beloved sports. So like I said, definitely out of my comfort zone. But those are all of the ones that I am thinking about reading this month. We'll kind of see and obviously in vlogs you'll be able to see which ones I actually do read. Next section I'm actually very excited for because I've never done something like this before and it's very transparent but I do want to talk about budget because I've mentioned that I recently have started keeping track of my budget. I more so am keeping track now than coming up with specific 
specific like limits on spending categories and things like that. But as I've mentioned, being a little post-grad girly, finances are different right now than they ever have been before in my life. Honestly, in the fact that I actually have an income, I'm not paying tuition, which is very different than <laughs> usual. So if you've been looking for a transparent budget, budget tree, budget this from me, here it is. So basically I have been using Notion to track my finances and I actually got this template off of one of Charlotte Pratt's videos. So I can link that video down below because I really just downloaded the template. I have not done <laughs> anything myself and it has the different months going on across the top up here and you can track both income and then also expenses with all of the months going across. So I did it fully in August. I kind of started in July and then September obviously did it fully as well. And so we have the income here, both my tutoring job and my social work job. I still have one paycheck that's coming on the 30th that I do not have yet. So this is not complete at this point, but so far the monthly income has been $2,589 and 42 cents. Now my guess is that my upcoming paycheck is going to be around 1300, but I really don't know that for sure, but that's what we're working with. And then as far as expenses goes, so it's all here and I kind of categorize them too. So with that category, I made myself a little pie chart. And now I'll put the pie chart up to the screen so I can be sitting here instead of holding the camera and we can kind of look. We can just go around the circle starting with the travel category because as you can see that is actually the largest category. That encompasses a few things which is why it's so big right now. I did take a trip with EF Ultimate Breaks last May and I have been paying that trip back and so this was actually my last big chunk that I was able to pay off the entire trip this month and so I think it was $834 was that last chunk that I was paying off for that trip that I've already taken, which is partly why that number is so high. Another big expense that goes into that number for why it is the largest spending category this month is the fact that I have another trip with them planned coming up in March. And so this is just something that I've been wanting to prioritize, especially being, you know, in my early 20s, not having too many responsibilities, like being able to take off for a few days, whatever it may be. And so I do have a trip coming up in March that I am quite excited for and am making the monthly payments to pay off before I go this time instead of after I go. With EF Ultimate Breaks, maybe you've heard of them before, but I really enjoyed my experience with them. I feel like they're a good way to travel. They're for people 18 to 35 years old, but it's a good way to travel wherever you want to go without having to make your own itinerary, without having to worry about accommodations or travel between places. And so that's honestly why I like it is because I get to go on trips that I don't have to stress about beforehand. And so if that's interesting to you, I am an ambassador. This isn't sponsored by them, but I do always have a link with a hundred dollars off code in my description so if you find that that's something you want to take advantage of as well or if you have any questions obviously you can let me know but that is why that category is so big for me is because it was the duality of paying off a previous trip plus planning a trip that's coming up we'll go counterclockwise around the circle investment that was a thousand and that was because I opened and deposited into my Roth IRA which I feel very proud and grown up about again that just comes with the fact that I'm young and don't have too many responsibilities and so part of my saving I do want to take advantage of things like Roth IRA even though I don't fully understand what it is I do a little bit just a little bit if we go to food next you can see that's $111 for the month remember that I live with Zach and Jason and so there are expenses that are split and so I know that that's not an amount that would be the same for everybody but 111 for me for food housing 726.55 that is everything I paid to my apartment complex plus Wi-Fi in that amount and so so I am very lucky and I don't know for real why I always joke that like our apartment is <laughs> like has broken infrastructure somewhere and one of these days we're just gonna fall off the building because somehow our rent did not increase as much as a lot of places in Atlanta did and already started pretty low. And then we're also splitting a two bedroom three ways. So all of those factors go in that my rent is $700 a month, which is ridiculous in Atlanta because nowadays you can get like a studio or like a one bedroom for like $2,400 a month, which like I said, is ridiculous. But as for me, I was blessed apparently, but I'm very, very glad about that rent amount. Going around to that purple you can see clothes $252 that's pretty irregular but I did buy a $150 pair of tennis shoes this month which is expensive for tennis shoes but I also kind of realized that I'm having to get shoes so often because I kept buying kind of cheap shoes and I use them a lot with walks and working out and everything so I got myself a pair of hokas which were $150 and then there was a few other things that kind of went into that as well that clothes category that functional category that you can't even see because it's so small that literally is iCloud storage that I pay for each month just like additional iCloud storage and so I don't know why I named it functional. I think it was my fancy way of saying iCloud storage, but literally 99 cents a month. So it doesn't even for real have to be included, but it was. As you can see, I have a little love for others category. That 
percentage seems kind of embarrassingly low, but just $76 this month. And I do sponsor two kids through Compassion International. So that's just a monthly fee that comes out each time is $76. In the previous months, it's been a little bit higher than that because birthday presents and Christmas gifts and stuff that were coming up, but $76 that what a love for me category. And that's just the category that I put stuff in like little coffees that I pick up or like I got a little muffin at a coffee shop the other day. Just like special kind of treats for myself, you know, it doesn't have to be food, but a lot of it is. That was $30.65 for this month. Car expenses were $58.02 for this month. I do want to note that whenever I have cash, I pay for gas and cash, and then I do not include it in my budget because cash is fake. So there was just one fill up this month that I paid card in, and then I also got a car wash, and so those were the car expenses, but really gas would have cost more. I just don't count it. Little health and wellness category, which is my way of making nails sound better. And I also got a greens powder that I added in there too. I went all out for nails for my sister's wedding. And so that's part of why that expense is high, but $185.38. YouTube expenses, $357.11. That includes the laptop payments because this is a work laptop. And so I made one monthly payment and also had to pay for tax for it. And I also had to get a USB converter. So that's what all these expenses this month were. Last month, that little section of the pie chart was really high because I got this new lens, if you remember all of that going down. But you know, expenses come up. And then lastly, subscriptions. That's literally Spotify is $9.99. So as far as finances go, I guess you could let me know if you feel differently. In the day-to-day -day spending, it is pretty low for me just because I've never been used to like going clothes shopping a lot or just like always eating out, like anything like that. Where obviously most of my expenses are lying right now was that travel section, which like I said, is just a priority that I have at the current moment. And so as far as expenses goes, like I said, I don't necessarily have like full goals that I'm trying to meet, but I do want to keep investing as I can while I have the chance to being mindful about spending, but allowing myself to get necessities when I need them. And what I do want to note too, because this goes into the budget transparency is that obviously I make money off of AdSense and whenever I do like brand collaborations from YouTube, well, social media income, none of that income I have ever touched. It is all sitting in a savings account, mostly because I have no idea how taxes work. <laughs> and so I'm just trying to have my YouTube income just sit all in one place until I figure that out. That is something I'm going to need to figure out. If anyone would like to help me figure out how YouTube taxes work, I feel like I probably am going to need to hire somebody this year. I just have absolutely no idea and it kind of stresses me out. But that's a savings account that all of that goes into. And so the September AdSense, like what I make in September, I won't actually receive until close to the end of October. However, the paycheck that I got from YouTube in September would have been from August's views and that was $119. But that's just sitting in a savings account. I don't touch it. It's just sitting there. Maybe eventually I'll pay myself from that account. We're just not at that point yet. <laughs> and since this is the first reset video, I don't really have anything to compare this budget to. But as we go forward, we can compare and see how the months differ and, you know, all of that going on. All right, monthly favorites section. Just so I can get a little like 2013 YouTuber fulfillment from myself. But number one in my favorite section are these workout shorts. They are both from Amazon. They are the same shorts. I like the purple ones so much that I ended up getting the blue ones too. But they are just regular biker short type deal. They are a good length for me. They fit me well and they were $13. So they're on my Amazon storefront if you are interested as well because they have a lot of color options and have been my absolute go-to for workouts this month. Don't laugh at me, but this pumpkin spice creamer has been a favorite of this month. Zach even loves it too. And he makes fun of pumpkin spice things, but he likes this creamer as well. So this is just silk almond pumpkin spice creamer. And it's what is in this coffee that I keep forgetting about that's sitting over here. Orgain protein. You know, I went through a journey finding a protein that I like that did not have dairy in it because I was looking like I was with child every time after I ate whey protein. And so for right now, Orgain is definitely the favorite. I don't know if it's going to be my favorite forever. I am willing to try other proteins as well, but I have gotten probably a total of eight pounds of their protein so far. And so definite favorite. I unfortunately do not have one with me right now, but ultimately, monthly favorite has been GT's peach kombucha. We stay mentioning it in videos. It has shown up on my TikTok. It just shows up all over the place because as soon as both Zach and I tried it, it is by far my favorite GT's kombucha flavor, which is saying something because I've been drinking them since like 2017. So for a new one to just immediately top the charts, very much saying something, but they are very good. Very peachy. Mr. Dave really outdid himself with that one with GT's. As far as media type things go, I have been watching Orange is the New Black lately 
Ellie and I have a complicated relationship with the show. I do like it. I am like hooked. I have definitely been binging it and that is why I was making the favorites video. The thorn of this statement is the fact that it does take place in prison which is very close to my daily job and like I mentioned in the beginning of this video there have been some very hard moments in my job recently and so sometimes there are some scenes of Orange is the New Black that surprisingly to me I did not know this would be the case but I have found to be quite triggering. I've had to start watching it with a little bit of like caution but I do really like it which is why it's making the favorites but just something to think about if you work in any type of correctional setting is if you watch Orange is the New Black kind of impossible for work to stay at work so it feels a little bit less relaxing you know but it is really good which is why it's in the favorites. And then podcasts that I've really loved this month. Number one Poog. It is a like comedy podcast but with a little health and wellness hat on it. I don't really know how to describe it at all except just give it a chance, listen to it, it's really funny. But I also feel like I learn from it sometimes, but mostly it's just kind of lighthearted fun and I really enjoy the way that they think and bounce off each other. And so Poog, listen to Poog. I've been listening to two hot takes recently. They take Reddit stories and just kind of flesh them out, talk about them, and it has been very interesting. And then I've also been loving Made in Manhattan, which is the podcast with Katie Bilotti, if you know her from YouTube, and her friends Colby and Adam, and they just talk about like dating in New York City. Again, it's just a fun one, pretty lighthearted. So those are my favorite podcast. Now obviously a reset routine reflection video would not be complete without some sort of goal creation or goal check-in and so personally I have not for real looked at my 2022 goals basically this whole year and now we're entering into the last quarter of this year and so reviewing those 2022 goals just to kind of see where we're at. I'm not going to actually check any off right now because I want to save that for December whenever I finish but as we can see we start with social media get monetized on YouTube that happened in March so that was pretty even early in the year. Got monetized on YouTube, make 1K through social media. I just recently met that, I believe a week and a half ago is when I reached 1K in that little savings account that I don't touch that I was talking about. This has the goal of three brand deals, which I feel like has happened. Social work degrees times two, that's kind of the biggest one as you know. But then there's been various, like I worked with Merit Beauty, I worked with Ana Luisa, which I still wear the little earring and necklace set they sent me. I wear them every day. <laughs> I feel like there's been some others in there that I can't remember right now at this time, but it's definitely been three. So that's kind of cool. 5K subscribers was the goal. I obviously am not at that yet. I do remember that number being very arbitrary because at the beginning of this year, I believe I had 600 subscribers. So I just really had no idea where the year would take me. I never feel let down by subscriber count at all. Like the fact, see how many are there right now? 2,078 subscribers right now. Like that feels like the whole world to me, honestly, especially because I remember remember when there was five subscribers and I still loved it. But 2,078 is a lot. That's more than we're in my high school. That's more than some small towns. I really just find myself feeling a mix of like gratitude and just surprise whenever subscriber count goes up. So this 5K, my guess is I'm probably not gonna make it by the end of the year, which is totally fine. I'm not gonna feel let down by that at all because I feel very happy with where I'm at. I had a goal of 1K on TikTok and I actually am very close to 3K right now. So that's kind of exciting. I had a goal of one viral YouTube video and I was measuring that at around 50k views has not happened again really doesn't disappoint me I feel like what I really like about my YouTube channel is that with sustainable growth it means that I get to know the people who are commenting and I feel like as cheesy as it sounds it's a little community and I really like that whereas if you go viral and grow a lot obviously that's cool it can be a jump start but there is a lot of value in that slow sustainable growth which I've been very content with more than content with goal of one viral TikTok and that was at 50k likes is how I was measuring that. I had a TikTok that reached 2.1 million views and I think like 180,000 likes. I'll answer it. It's all in my kindness. What they do with it? And like with basically any viral type TikTok, total fluke. Like <laughs> I had no idea that was gonna blow up at all in any type of way, but I think it just hit, it just resonated with people. And so that was kind of cool. And probably about a thousand of my followers came from that TikTok specifically. I had fitness and health goals of activity around five times a week. I feel like I've probably maintained that. And I remember phrasing it as activity just because that could include a walk or really just anything, stretching, like just some type of body movement about five times a week. Water. I've actually been kind of good about that lately. I feel like I've been kind of a hydrated queen, just a little bit. Stretching, I definitely can get better at. I'm definitely still bad at it. I just don't do it. And I know that it's very beneficial 
official, but I still just don't do it. Professional and career goals, graduate with MSW, check. Get licensed as an LMSW, maybe six days from now, that'll be a check. Mm. Mm. <laughs> my test is in six days so it'll either happen in six days or not this year because with the test you can only test once every three months and so if i not putting this into the world but if i fail on monday i wouldn't be able to take it again until january so definite fingers crossed for passing and getting my social work license had a goal of social work job post-grad check and then lifestyle i just wanted to travel one fun trip and i remember saying that that could be anything like a weekend trip or just something fun and and I have definitely done that. I went to Europe in May, Hungary, Romania, and Serbia. I went to Colorado in June for my sister's bachelorette party. I went to Colorado in September for her wedding. I went home in May, so that was also fun. Coming up next week, I'll be going to North Carolina for a cousin's bridal shower. I just booked tickets home for Thanksgiving. Oh, that was part of the travel expenses too. I forgot about that. For the tickets home for Thanksgiving. So there's definitely things happening, which is kind of cool since the goal was at least one fun trip. And then I had a goal of like towards the end of graduate school, just saving 50% of my money because I didn't have too many expenses at that point. And I wanted to be set up to be successful in the kind of buffer time between graduation and starting my job and then first getting paid for my job and everything. So it was a goal to save a lot then. And I have successfully made it through that time. So that could also be as success so far. That's kind of cool that the 2022 goals are coming along. I guess the only ones that would still need progress technically is that 5k subscribers, 50k views, on a YouTube video and getting that LMSW. Those are the ones that are still in need of something or other. So looking forward, the goals that I have upcoming, I'm not gonna set these like as a limit in October. Maybe it's just towards the end of the year, but just the intentions for the upcoming time. And I will go ahead and write these down, but after the video, because I know this video is probably three hours long at this point, but my upcoming goals, as far as social media goes, I wanna lower the pressure for myself. Like I said, it's totally self-inflicted pressure, but I'm gonna try to lower it. I think a nice attainable goal is 2,500 subscribers. And again, with goal, like I said, each person that subscribes just feels like my heart is full afterwards, but I'm on like kind of growth track to reach 2,500 before the end of the year. So 2,500 subscribers. And then with the new laptop that I've mentioned, I also upgraded to Final Cut Pro. And so I want to be able to learn and get comfortable with Final Cut Pro because it is a big adjustment in editing. As far as fitness and health goes, I mostly just want to continue what I've been up to. But the part that I do want to change is relying more on dedication than straight motivation. And by that, I mean dedication to my goals. Like even when I don't feel motivated, even when I don't want to do something, still getting up and doing it. Because I think in September, I very much was relying moment by moment like does this feel like something I want to do today instead of thinking like no this is an intention that I have for myself like I'm going to get up and be active or whatever it may be I want to rely more on that overarching dedication than just the moment to moment motivation so that's a goal that I have and then as the weather gets cooler less Georgia heat in the summer I want to go on more walks because I just love them in the fall specifically as far as professional and career goals go getting my license will know in six days <laughs> that's all I can say on that and then just kind of life style and habits, I do have a goal to just begin reading more again because as I have already mentioned, I did not do that. I have fallen off the wagon. If there are any sections of this video that you particularly enjoyed or any sections that I did not include that you would maybe like to see in future reset videos, I am by no means committing to monthly reset videos like this, but I do think they're fun and it's good to sit down and kind of take this time to reflect and change direction as needed, especially now that I'm in my achievement era <laughs> instead of my exhaust era but definitely give feedback and let me know what some goals are that you are personally working on. I appreciate you so much. I'm so glad that we were able to take this kind of little slow moment together. And I just know that whatever you're doing in your life, whether you are in your own personal achievement era, or if you're working on just being and enjoying and living life, whatever it may be, you are doing incredible. You are doing the best you can with what you have. And that is all that you can ask of yourself. And so as I've already said so many times, I appreciate you. I hope you have a great rest of your day, rest of your week, and I'll see you next time.